Hi friends, how's it going? Welcome to Pop Up Let's Make Kitchery with Rob today. <laughs> so, so many of you have uh, asked us about the recipe that we use to make kitchery. And we uh, were making kitchery for a friend today. And we thought, well, this would be a perfect time to do a little Facebook Live. And then this will be there, you know. Uh, just on our videos and you'll be able to go back next time you want to make some kitchery. So anyway, uh, I wanted to just share my brand new apron. This is my Feed Everyone apron. This is from the Neem Karoli Baba Ashram in Taos. And uh, a lot of you have eaten our kitchery at our Feed Everyone Kirtan. This, I think we've had three or four in a row every year about my birthday. We have what's called the Feed Everyone Kirtan, and we raise money for Northwest Harvest, and we take a lot of food from people to give to food banks locally here in Seattle, and uh, and I also make an enormous pot of kitchery, and uh, so anyway, so that's what's happening today. Um, before we get started, I want to also just give credit to Govindas, our beloved friend and teacher, Govindas. This is technically his recipe and well whether it's his recipe or whether uh, he got it from somewhere else but we got it from him uh, a few years ago and he calls it Govindas's Cosmic Kitchery so and Govindas and his family eat this about four times a week I have to know that for a fact and I would probably eat it about four times a week too if Melissa would let me but. <laughs> So she's behind the camera today. We're gonna have to come say hi, Melissa, before we get started. Just so people, there hi. she is. <laughs> anyway, so she's pursuing her dreams of being a cooking, uh, <laughs> cooking show director and producer. And for the record, um, she was the one that uh, said this morning, let's do that pop-up kitchery. We gotta make uh, kitchery for Cynthia. And so, Speaking of Cynthia, I just wanted to give everyone an update. Uh, a few, a couple of weeks ago, I think during Kirtan, we mentioned that we asked for prayers for Cynthia and uh, our dear friend Cynthia, who actually means the world to us because she introduced us. We met, Melissa and I met each other at Cynthia's wedding. So uh, we owe a lot to Cynthia. And a couple of weeks ago, Cynthia went through really, really tricky surgery, a brain surgery, and, and she's okay, and she's home. And it was a really rough ride, you know, with the coronavirus going on right now. Uh, her family couldn't even come visit her. She was in the hospital for nearly a week, and uh, her family and friends, no one was able to come visit her. And anyway, but so we're on the, what do they call that? The food train? Meal train. Or, meal train, we're on the meal train. And May 6th is our uh, our dinner responsibility. So we're taking over some kitchery. And then I'll also be making some chocolate chip cookies um, a little bit later as well. So I'm gonna take her some chocolate chip. I was gonna, that was, oh, that was a surprise. surprise. Oh, it's I her hope. birthday. Oh, and, and maybe, is it, is it actually her birthday today? No, no, it's this weekend. Her birthday is this weekend. So anyway, so thank you to all of you who, who threw out some prayers for uh, for Cynthia, I'm sure that she felt them, uh, and uh, knowing the power of prayer, I know that it probably helped. So, anyway, okay, so let's get to this. Um, like any good cooking show, I've pre-chopped everything, mm, let's see. Uh, so we don't have to watch me chop. Mm. Kitchery uh, is is it's an Ayurvedic food. It's considered to be a very sattvic food for those of you that are familiar with. With that but it really it really means um, it's very nourishing it's very grounding uh, and it's also um, has only sattvic uh, ingredients in them so nothing in it is going to aggravate you or nothing in it is going to um, uh, really weigh you down so it's, it's a very balanced lovely meal people do kitchery cleanses in in Ayurveda this happens all the time and people will eat just just kitchery for a week or two weeks or a month or something like that and that might even be a little bit too much for me so <laughs> anyway uh, kitchery can be made vegan um, there's only one uh, thing in it that's not vegan and that is ghee and so I'm gonna make it with ghee today because I love ghee I'm a cheesy vegan 
<laughs> That's how I like to define myself because I'm pretty much a vegan, but I eat cheese and I eat ghee. Now, and I'm... you're cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's quiet down in the peanut gallery there. Um, so we will uh, we'll be using ghee, fresh made ghee. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this over here? Yeah. This is my fresh made ghee. In fact, it's so fresh I can barely hold this. It is. Ooh. Oh man! So I just made that ghee right before you all came online, or right before we started taping this, and so um, I always offer it up. To Hanuman or to Krishna or somebody uh, and by the way too it's very important making kitchari and making ghee um, that you chant some mantras during it and then you'll have mantra infused prasad so it's very simple even it's a simple Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram while you're making your making your food and suddenly you have blessed prasad so we have some blessed prasad ghee. I already did some maha mantra and some uh, jay sitaram while I was making the ghee. And we're gonna be chanting a little bit while we um, are making the kitchari. And okay, so very simple ingredients we've got going on. Um, we are going to be using yellow split mung dal and uh, organic everything is ideal. Um, but that's personal preference. But split split yellow mung dal, that's going to be the first main ingredient. And then rice, this is basmati rice, but sometimes I use jasmine rice as well. And then uh, the vegetables in the kitchari, I use sweet potato, zucchini, and carrot. So, you know, there's no real exact, like, uh, amount of um, vegetables to put it. I'm not going to tell you like one cup of this, one cup of that. It's totally your preference thing. And maybe you got to try it and see what, what, what kind of ratio you like between the, between the, the, the dal and the rice and, and, and the vegetables. So I tend to kind of go over the top on the vegetables. So um, today what we're going to do is we're going to make what just one full pot of it. And the beautiful thing about kitchen is it all we made in just one pot. So we're going to make the whole thing in this in this one pot. Although I am going to um, saute the, the spices, which I'll show you in just a minute, in this little pan just to bring out the flavor a little bit with the ghee. But um, so with this, so the one, one uh, full serving makes enough for about, I don't know, four or five or six people, depending on how, um, how hungry you are. Melissa and I, when we make it for ourselves, it's just the two of us because we don't like to keep too many leftovers because the prana of the food, you know, dissipates as you as you leave food in the fridge. Um, although leftover kitchari is really tasty, so <laughs> you know, the it has less prana mm. but more flavor. I don't know. Um, what was that? I love the bottom, the kind of the oh, look, cooked like on the bottom of the pot. On the yeah, I really like that part. Yeah, and then once you let it cool, it'll scrape right off and it becomes kind of like, almost like a bread item or something. <laughs> yeah. And Melissa likes that especially, so I always give that part to Melissa. Thanks, babe. Um, and so, uh, so if, for example, to, in, this, in this batch, I used like two medium sweet potatoes. I used one largish carrot and I used um, two medium zucchinis and then it's, then the fourth vegetable is kale and I usually use like if you buy like a bunch of kale a full bunch of kale at the grocery store I usually use about a half of it or two-thirds of it depending on how big the bunch is so that's all the veggies that are gonna go in it and then the spices uh, we're gonna have some coriander we're going to have some cumin, and we're going to have some turmeric, and that's it. So, let's get started. So, with this full batch, um, the numbers are really simple. We're going to use, we're going to start with five to six cups of water. So, I've already put four cups of water in here, and what I'm going to do is then I take, then I take these two cups, and I'm going to pour one cup in, and then I'm going to leave one cup and I'm going to just add that gently as it's cooking as I need it. Because I don't want to put too much water. Even, you know, you can, but you'll end up with kind of more of a soupy kind of thing. And I like it to be a little more of a, of a they call it dry kitchery versus wet kitchery. I like the dry kitchery vibe. So I'm going to put one more cup in here. Um, and 
then what I'll do is I'll turn it on to boil. We're turning the oven on to boil. And then this is what I typically then, the first thing that I'll do is while that's heating up, I'll wash the mung beans. So these are very simple. So it's Sorry. whatever. I just put my fingers in the view. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do one cup mung beans, one cup rice, super easy. So I'll put these in a strainer. You can do it in the pot if you want before you start heating up the water. You know, if you don't have a strainer like this, but I'll just go ahead and give it a rinse until I start to see the water running clear. Did you just mix the beans and the rice? No. Oh, no. I did that last time and the, the strainer is not quite big enough. So ah. I, it was really a struggle. So I'm currently doing the, um, so I'll do the mung beans and then I'll throw them in there. So one cup mung beans into my water that's heating. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the rice. So one cup rice. The beautiful thing about kitchery, um, this one pot kind of thing is like, if, if you don't get the numbers quite right, it's not, it's just really not the end of the world, you know? Um, if you, if maybe you prefer with a little more rice and less mung beans or vice versa, it's not gonna, it's not gonna um, really affect it in any way. So we'll give that a nice rinse. Plop that in there too. So typically, I won't have the stuff, uh, I, I wouldn't have this all chopped. So the beautiful thing too about this is that you can kind of go one step at a time and it all works out really well. So what I would do is I would get this going and then if I hadn't pre-chopped everything, now I would chop the sweet potatoes. You know, and that would take me just a couple of minutes maybe three minutes or something to chop all these sweet potatoes. And in that time, this would, this would just start to come up to heat. Question, Question. do you ever add onions? Well, or are they not um, sopic? no, onions are not sopic. Uh, but you could. And I've eaten kitchery with onions before. In fact, the kitchery that they make us at the Rainforest Guest House in India, which is delicious, but it, is, it has onions and, and garlic. garlic. Yeah. So you can add onions and garlic if you want the flavor, but we don't typically because then um, it, it takes it out of the sattvic realm. And then it basically doesn't, it's not really an Ayurvedic dish anymore. It's just a really tasty, yummy, uh, spicy dish. Um, okay. All right, so then I'm gonna add, and then the way that I do it as I Typically add the sweet potatoes first because they seem like they take just the longest to cook of everything. And I cook, I cut the sweet potatoes just down into these little, I don't know, three quarter inch chunks. That's a preference thing as well. Um, the larger you make them, the longer it may take to get them cooked. Um, and if you, um, you don't want them to be so big that everything takes really long to cook because then the rice and the mung beans, they kind of, they just become like a paste. You know, they don't, they basically just sort of turn into a mush. So it's nice to still have, you know, you don't want it to be al dente, you don't want like crunchy mung beans, but you, but you don't want the mung beans to disappear. You want to still be able to kind of, so anyway, so I'll throw the sweet potatoes in there first, give that a stir. And it's starting to almost be boiling. So in the in the like, like I said, so I would put the sweet potatoes in there, and then I would be like, oh, okay, well now I'm gonna chop the carrot. So I would probably take me another minute or so to wash and chop the carrot. And the carrots usually the second thing that I like to put in there. Now, by the way, if you want to make this with a rice cooker, we never do it that way. But you make it with a rice cooker, you literally or like a like. A, what do they call those pressure cookers or 
There's a new is that thing. Instapot? There's a new thing called the Instapot, and I'm sure you could, um, the, the way with that is you literally just stick all the ingredients in there and push the button on the rice cooker, and when you come back. That's how, that's how G makes it. Yeah. Not at home, but he makes yeah. it like at the, um, so, and that's uh, that's super easy way too. So, this is easy, and you can make it even easier. Okay, so at this point, um, it's just it's just starting to um, boil. So what I'll do is I'll turn it down, and I turn it to like medium low. So on my thing, I have a dial, and it's like 10, 10 notches. Unfortunately, I have electric. Wah, wah. I have electric um, burners. So, but I'll turn this one down to just maybe four or three and a half out of out of um, out of ten. So just medium low heat, and we're gonna so that simmers. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna cook up these spices. So. These numbers are super easy too. It's two, 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 and two. So two tablespoons of ghee. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be nice and easy because it's all so sweet and fresh. So two tablespoons of ghee. And then I'll turn this on to like a medium high or something like that. You don't wanna go too high because you don't wanna, you don't wanna burn your spices, but when you do this, it, it helps to bring out the flavors. So if you just want to take your, your kitchery to the next level. Now, I would say at least 50% of the time, I'm too lazy. And you can just put the two tablespoons of ghee and you can put the spices. And now, and then it's two teaspoons. So two tablespoons of ghee and then two teaspoons of each of these spices. So this is a coriander. So I'll do two, two teaspoons of coriander. Oh, we better put coriander on the list. Oh, no, we're almost <laughs> up. All right, so then we'll do two teaspoons of coriander, two teaspoons of cumin. Oops. What's happening? I just hit the ringer. Does that mean I've done something? I don't think so. Is okay. It, is it still there? Okay, so <laughs> two teaspoons of cumin. Two teaspoons each? Two teaspoons coriander, two teaspoons cumin, and two teaspoons... Um, Turmeric. Turmeric. Yeah. And how much ghee was it? Two tablespoons. Okay. So it's two, 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 and two. All right. Okay, so then, now what I've learned the hard way, like maybe I have some examples. Oh yeah, this one is a good example. I'm not sure you can see this, but turmeric stains everything it touches. So <laughs> I've learned not to use like Oops. a wood spoon. I don't know if you can see that, but that one's pretty stained with yellow turmeric. So I have, this is my kitchery, um, my, my kitchery spoon, because it doesn't stain, and it's also, I don't really care about it, and it scrapes the bottom really well. So it has a multi, multi-facet uh, uses. It's the winning spoon. It's the winning spoon. So you have to find your own, but if you do decide to use a wooden spoon, just prepare for the ends of it to turn yellow. And this is why, also why I'm wearing an apron, because I have splashed turmeric on myself, making kitchery many, many times. So It's a good turmeric blending apron. So we'll just let that heat for a minute, until, just until it starts to bubble a little bit, and then we'll put it in there. While I'm waiting for that, um, I'm going to go ahead and start um, <laughs> chopping up the kale. My oh. top notch filming skills. This is, yeah, is impressive. <laughs> Lots you're of gonna, fingers. You're going to win an Oscar. Uh, and... I'm a little bouncy, I think. <laughs> anyway, so I just kind of chop up that kale. You don't have to chop it up too much because it cooks down real. Real well. It looks like a lot now, but it's not gonna look like that once we get it going. Okay, oh see look at this. Can you show this? Oh you see that? Let's see. Smoothly. The, it's it's there. kind of bubbling. Oh yeah. Can you see that? So that's pretty much where we want to do it. So then I'm gonna come over here 
But now, this is tricky too. You, you want to be careful with this because it, oftentimes the hot ghee, the boiling ghee, when it hits the water, will kind of splash up. So I don't know, if, if you get it, get closer on this, maybe you can hear it. You mm. hear that? Yes. Yeah, so you got, I've gotten splashed that way too, by the way. Oh, and it smells so good. Yeah, and then so here's my trick too to clean that pan out is that what I like to do is I'll just take a little bit of the water and it kind of, and it helps just clean that pan out. Because you want to get all that goodness. You definitely want to get all that ghee. So I mentioned that you could make this, um, you could make this vegan. All you would have to do is replace the ghee with coconut oil or olive oil or avocado oil or anything like that. All right? So then we'll stir that in. And I got a nice simmer going here, so I like my, my heat setting. So that's good. And so then what I do is then I do the zucchini. The zucchini's kind of takes, you know, not as much time as the sweet potato to cook, um, but a little longer than the kale. So I usually, because I don't want anything to get, you know, overcooked. And that's the advantage of cooking it on the stove top like this over a rice cooker is that you kind of get to regulate it. Because this way, if I put the um, if I put the zucchini in at the same time as the sweet potato and I cook it until the sweet potato is finished, then oh, see, look what I did. I mean, because it was just sitting here. It's already yellow. It's already yellow. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, then what ends up happening is that I have overcooked zucchini and undercooked sweet potato. And so I've just kind of <laughs> learned to, uh, to do it like this. All right. So I'm going to turn that up just a little bit because every time I put in some more veggies, um, Seems like it needs a little, a little love. And then, this is a tip that I've been trying to teach Melissa for, <laughs> for many years, is that while cooking, you can do dishes <laughs> while you're cooking. And then, <laughs> and then you don't have like a totally devastated kitchen when you're all done. But anyway, sorry, that was, that was underhanded. <laughs> big. More washing, more time for meditation. Washing meditation. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so while we're at this stage, this would be the perfect place to infuse the... Oh. To infuse this with some, some mantra. So, yeah. Melissa, will you come on over here with me? Oh. Come on over here. Let's, let's, let's sing. So those of you who've been on the retreat with us, you know this one. Come on. Okay. Hands together. <laughs> If you want to, if you want to chant with us while you're out there, go ahead. And if you're cooking right now, and you've been, you know, if you're watching this later and you're actually cooking this, and uh, this would be a good time to do it too. All right, so let's all do it together. So, yeah, sometimes you do got to moderate that, you gotta, or you got to watch the heat, because when I added those zucchinis, it really kind of cooled it down, and it stopped it simmering. So I have to turn it up a little bit, get that simmering again, and once that gets nice and simmery again, then I'll go ahead and add this. Um, so then the last ingredient that you might add is salt. So, you know, salt's one of those preference things. A lot of recipes don't even tell you how much salt, they just say salt for preference. I follow the two, 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 two rule, and two teaspoons of salt seems to be pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And I have just, over making this batch of kitchery a hundred times, I have kind of come to this place where um, 
two teaspoons of salt works really nice. But again, uh, if you're making this at home, like start with one and taste it, you know, and then, uh, and then salt it from there. Um, the other thing uh, that I wanted to share with you too is, uh, in just a moment, is the accoutrement, we call it. <laughs> the, uh, the things that you can spice up your kitchery with after the fact, when you're actually putting it in your bowl and eating it. Um, so I am going to now, I'm going to wait another minute and let this just simmer a couple more minutes before I add the kitchery. So let me tell you about our accoutrement. Um, so some of the things that we like to put on um, kitchery uh, is avocado, so a slice of avocado. Now, actually the first thing that I like to put on my kitchery is a little more ghee. <laughs> so you put a little ghee on it um, and it just kind of just kind of adds a little you know um, but like I said I'm 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 into ghee so then you can put some slice of avocado that's a nice add um, squeeze of lime this is a really lovely thing um, if you want it a little more salty sometimes if you didn't put enough salt but you want more salt vibe you can uh, we use Bragg uh, liquid aminos so um, it, when we have it all we use it all so if, in the best case scenario we have avocado we have lime we have ghee we have brag and then finally um, some chopped cilantro is really nice on there too so um, those are what we like to call the accoutrement and uh, they just make the already delicious dish of kitchery even more delicious and a little more special feeling, especially if it's the third night in a row. And okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the kale in now. that a stir. It always takes a little bit to kind of get in there, but once it softens up. Now I can already tell right now that I'm going to need some more water here in a minute. But I'm going to, because I want to heat the kale up as quickly as possible so I can stir it into the food. I'm not going to put any more water in there because that's going to cool it down. So I'm just going to stir the kale in. Can you see that? Can you see in there? Yes, I can, can see. see in there? Uh -huh. So I'm stirring the kale into the dish. Whoop, my glass is all fogged up there. It happens occasionally. <laughs> Gotta be careful. <laughs> all right. But so now you can see actually that there's not even, uh, it's not even enough water in there to cover everything. And the rice and the, um, and the veggies are nowhere near being done. So what we'll do is what I usually do is I just add like about a quarter cup at a time. Just get a little splash and then I stir it in. And we are literally in the home stretch here, ladies and gentlemen. This is, um, oh wait, I'm not supposed to say that anymore, am I? Jeez. <laughs> I love you all. Uh, it's just old school reflexes playing themselves out. Joy's asking, can you add hot water so it doesn't cool it down? Yeah, you can, but you know, that's, but with a, you, sure, that's a great idea. But with, but with, uh, once you're at this point and there's that much stuff in there and it's all hot, that um, a quarter cup, you know, at a time isn't going to make a big difference, especially if you just keep an eye on it. I can already tell that that's not even going to be enough. So I'm putting a little more. I will, typically will use this whole six, Cups. It's pretty rare that I don't, and occasionally, depending on how everything is shaking out and how much moisture is in the veggies, um, because maybe sometimes your sweet potatoes are a little fresher and have a little more moisture left in them, or, or a little less, and they're soaking it in. Um, you know, so if you go over a little bit, um, but it'll be somewhere, somewhere in the six cup um, realm. Let's see, look, I've already managed to stain my, my uh, cutting board over here with this turmeric spoon. Um, I think we're just resolved to be a turmeric family. Well, it's just, it's really... It's, Once you add turmeric into your life. It's really powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I really don't have a pair of white anything that doesn't have a little bit of turmeric on it. Okay. And, yeah, so like I said, folks, we're really in the home stretch here. So what you're going to do at this point, uh, we probably won't... Um, we won't keep rolling here uh, all the way until it's done. We're probably about 10 or 15 minutes away from being totally finished. And the rest of the process is you just monitor it. You sing lots of mantras. If you want to sing a Hanuman Chalisa, that's really delicious. Those are my favorite, um, my favorite kitcheries. I mean, I suppose we could just, we could just uh, sing Chalisa for everybody. Well, uh, sure. Well, why don't we do that? Because that's really... That's really a sweet, a sweet thing to do. Do you ever cover the pot? No, there's no need to cover the pot. Should we do one like this? Here. Yeah, do that one. Aren't you gonna come in and help me? Uh, I'm singing from here. So I like to use my drum because it's just, just easy, right? You know, and it doesn't mind if it gets turmeric on it because it's already yellow. Shri Guru Chana
Si a Bararama Chandra ki! Okay, so now that is some seriously mantra infused kitchery there. Jay Hanuman! Jay Hanuman. Okay, so if you are making kitchery, and at this stage you just keep keep monitoring this, and eventually you'll give it a little taste. I can tell it still needs about maybe five or eight more minutes, so the rice doesn't look quite done, but. Yeah. Yep. Mm. What? Hey, come on. Um, All right, and then you cut up your accoutrement. And then you cut up your accoutrement or whatever you have or whatever you want. And then you dish it up and then you put your bits on top. And voila. I'm sorry that we, if this was a real official cooking show, I would be like, and here is the finished. <laughs> but I don't have that. So. <laughs> Because this is it. This is the one pot of kitchery. I didn't make a special pot of kitchery this morning for a demo. This is it. And in fact, this whole thing is going over to Cynthia's house. And um, I hope she will enjoy it. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or if you decide to make some kitchery and you can't figure something out. But it's all pretty straightforward. And I think, Melissa, you have put in the... I put the in ingredients in. But haven't you been like the two teaspoons and the two I, tablespoons? Yeah, I put all the quantities and the Great. ingredients. Great. So the recipe's all there in the comments section. And uh, I hope that your kitchen is yummy, and I'm sure it will be. And thanks for tuning in. Lots of love. Namaste. <laughs>